is ready for a story. I am a first time cow owner. My first set of heifers are nearing about 10 months old right now. I want to start off by saying someone via YouTube comments did warn me about one risk of letting my husky dog, Masha, play with my heifers. He informed me that he wouldn't recommend it unless I was okay losing my dog to a tragic accident. I'm not here to say that that isn't a risk, but what I wish somebody would have warned me about is if I let my huskies bond with my heifers, that my huskies would try to set them free. For context, heifers live here, huskies live here. Nala. Huskies are known Houdinis. They get out of everything. They've learned to get out of crates. They've learned how to get out of horse stalls. Bear knows how to open the door. We use a crowbar for leverage to hold the door shut. We take a lot of steps to ensure that Masha and Bear are not able to exit the stall. However, Bear takes this as a challenge and he gets his mental stimulation in the form of figuring out how to break out of uh, the new system that we put into place. Let's get into it. Last night I was making some homemade mac and cheese just as the timer for the noodles goes off. Bandit is our oldest healer. He starts flipping out at the back door. I stop what I'm doing with dinner and I decide to go check out the back door to see what he's barking at. To my surprise, upon further inspection, I see two very fluffy dogs, which I'm very familiar with, being where they're not supposed to be. And that's fine. Mind you, it's very dark. I'm making dinner late. It's 7.30, 8 o'clock between there. Gosh darn it, I better go get my coat on. And as I open the door to go outside, there are five lovely heifers, also not where they're supposed to be. The heifers have been out before. It was relatively easy to get them back in that time. This is the first time I have seen my huskies and the heifers enjoying a nice run together outside and they're all in my backyard um, which is great they know where to find me um however my backyard is the only place that has access to the road masha and bear are well known around here for eating smaller animals such as chickens and baby goats luckily for me they actually like the heifers a little too much my First priority was to go put Masha and Bear back. I bring them back to the barn, put them in their stall. Um, fingers crossed, they're not gonna get out again. Pretty uh, relaxed at this point because I've had the heifers get out before. Of course, as I walked into the barn, everything that we try to keep the heifers away from, they rummaged through. And I can see that Masha and Bear got out. They opened this gate and then they proceeded to open this gate. Kind of what I would expect to see with the heifers getting out, they're very curious. Whoever said curiosity killed the cat hasn't met a cow. I grab a rope harness, I grab my grain bucket. I'm walking back over to my backyard and to my surprise, there's nothing there. <laughs> there is no heifer in sight. Where could they have gone? The only option from this point, everything else is fenced in. There was one weak point in our fence is how they uh, got into the backyard to begin with. Wow, I really hope they're in the front yard. Nope, not there. I see some white spots running by. Lila is so polite to stop in the driveway and make eye contact with me. I'm holding the bucket, I'm like, hey, come here, food. She looks at me, she looks at Cassie and um, they just continue to run. This is like my worst fear. So when I saw the girls running in the road, I ran in the house, grabbed my phone to call my partner to tell him, I'm going to cry, our cows are in the road. At this point, my puppy blue healer, Mia, slips out the front door. He tells me I should probably hop in my car. Mia's running out somewhere in the dark, and I decide that I'm just gonna have to hope for the best that she stays around here because I have a bigger, literally a bigger problem. My partner recommended that I got in my car. That's what I did. I have a 97 Camry. 
they're all running in the ditch on the right side of the road. I speed past them, whip around, quickly accelerate in their faces. They're horrified and they book it back north towards my house. Heifers run very fast. Oh no, they're going past my driveway again. What I need to do is get them back into my driveway, hope they go back to the barn. <laughs> they're going past my driveway. I have to speed past them again, whip around. I'm hurting them with my 97 Camry. That's what I'm doing. I'm hurting my heifers in the road with my Camry. And as I am maneuvering my front wheel drive Camry on my narrow ass road, it's fucking dark. We don't have street lights. If it's in my 97 Camry headlight and of illumination, that's what I can see. I'm trying to guess where the cows are by udders in the dark. That's literally what I can see. It's just udders. I will say at this point, anything stupid I've ever done in a front wheel drive vehicle from the ages 16 to 20 really came in handy this night. So I could properly herd my heifers here in the present with my car. Luckily, they go back to what's familiar, which is my backyard. They just all kind of huddle in a pile. They found our compost bucket. So I decided to try again with my green bucket. I pick it up, thank God. So drop over here, she's our Dutch belted Jersey. Oh, food, how convenient. We're hungry right now after our long run that we took into the road. She follows me. Snowdrop is the worst when it comes to a bucket. We just will stick her head in there. I'm sure. So she can. No drop, head in bucket, walking her back to the barn. The cool thing about heifers is that when they notice a member is missing in the herd, they will send out a moo signal to try to find out where this member has gone. Cassie moos, comes around the corner, sees that I am a third of the way to the barn with a bucket and snowdrop. Naturally, she starts to get competitive because she's like, oh, I can't just let Snowdrop have all the food. But we got two out of five cows now. Like clockwork, Delilah pops her head up, sends out her moo signal, and starts to follow us. Nala realizes that everyone's almost gone. It's Nala and Rouge now with their heads in this empty compost bucket. She, of course, comes running by. I guide them back into the barn because I left the gate open in case anyone got scared and ran back in or just decided, you know, they were done going out for the night. Everyone's in here eating. Got four out of five heifers in here. Feeling a little bit of a relief. And now I have to collect the worst heifer to collect, which is Rouge. That pile of cow right there. Rouge has come a long way since she has joined us on our farmstead. We're able to get her to and from pasture with the motivation of food. Unless something very, very tiny and peculiar goes wrong and she gets very confused and she'll just start running around in circles and she gets very scared. Looking back to my backyard where Rouge was left behind because all of her herd is gone. She's just a mess. She's just running in circles around my house. Mia, who slipped out earlier, was having the time of her life chasing Rouge in a circle around our house. It was the most adorable thing I've ever seen. It is cuter than a little blue healer puppy chasing around a heifer. If there's anything cool that happened last night, our puppy cattle dog in training instinctually doing her job. I hung up on my um, partner while I was mid freak out prior to hurting our heifers with my Camry. He's freaking out, not knowing that I've already got most of the heifers already here. So he calls our neighbor and lets him know my partner's home alone, all the cows are on the road, she needs help, he pops out of the dark, and it scares the shit out of me. And of course, since it scared the shit out of me, it also scared Rouge, who now decided to book it into the abyss of our dark pitch black field. I let him know I just have to get the one who's scared. Not gonna be very helpful with you here. He leaves. At least Rouge is now on our property. I'm gonna go make sure a majority of our heifers are uh, contained in this spot. Of course, I didn't lock anything. Mosh and Bear were already almost making their way out of the stall again. I'm heading back out of this gate as I'm on top of the gate, trying to hook in the chain 
so I can make sure these ladies don't make an exit again. I hear something bellowing from the field. Scariest moo that I have only ever heard in a sail barn barreling towards me. I look back and I see this chunk of cow screaming the most scared moo I've ever heard in my entire life. So I hop off the gate, I open it, she runs in, I close it. She's still mooing up a storm in here. Naturally, all the ladies who were now chewing cud and relaxing after their night jog and their fourth meal are now all standing at the gate. Cows are curious. This cow that they forgot even existed after their snacks is now screaming in here. So I can either patiently wait for everyone to go back about their business. I'm kind of done <laughs> at this point. So I go get another bucket of grain. I open the gate. Rouge has an issue with gates. She only likes to attempt to enter them from a piece that is a gate. She is not capable of going around the gate. Her first five go-tos are go through the gate and then back over here through the gate. Eventually at some point she went back in. I locked everyone up and I went and finished dinner, which I'll post because I took videos of me making homemade mac and cheese. Um, if anyone's wondering about the puppy, she has patiently waited on the steps uh, near our back door. She is a very good dog who sometimes also just needs to go on a night run. I just got done walking my beloved Huskies, Masha and Bear in the pouring rain that I did want to add. There's nothing that excites me less than seeing Huskies and heifers where they're not supposed to be. Masha and Bear are very well-trained, great companions for us. You cannot train the Husky out of a Husky. Not all Huskies have all stereotypical traits, such as jumping fences, getting out of anything you try to put them in. You may get lucky and get one without the fence jumping and the Houdiniism. It's not like that over here. My Huskies tend to be perfect Monday through Wednesday, possibly on a waning moon, but never on a full moon.